Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to talk about basic transformations of functions. Before we can do any transformations, we need to know with what all of the basic functions look like. So all linear functions stem from this basic line y equals x. All quadratic functions are in the form of y equals x squared, and they all stem from this quadratic equation whose vertex is at the origin. A cubic function, y equals x to the third, looks something like this, where half of a parabola on top, half of a parabola on bottom, and kind of squiggly like that. Absolute value functions look like these. They're all centered at the origin. So v for value helps you remember that absolute value functions are in the form of a v. And square root functions start at zero and increase to the right. So now it's going to be very helpful that you memorize what these five basic functions look like so that you can do the transformations. Now this topic of transformations is first taught in Algebra 2. So if you haven't learned this yet, please pay close attention. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is a vertical shift. So we have y equals f of x, whatever function we have, and we're going to add c to it. So what that means to do is shift upwards. So we'll say move up whatever c is. Okay? If it comes after and it's a subtraction sign, it means to move down c units, whatever c is. Now, you might be asking, well, what is f of x? f of x is just any function that you desire to, to have. So let's look at example number one. It says y equals x squared plus 4. x squared is your f of x and you're adding 4 to it. Let's look at example number 2. We have x to the third, and then we're subtracting 3. So your f of x is x to the third. And in number 3, we have the absolute value of x, then minus 5. So the function that we're talking about here is your absolute value function. So the first thing I want to do is actually write down the different types of functions that we have. So this one here is quadratic. This second one here is cubic, and the third one is absolute value. So again, here is the function f of x, and I'm adding 4 to it. So that's a plus c. So that means we're going to move this thing up c units, or here, 4 units up. So we want to draw in the parent function, or the basic function first. So since we know it's a quadratic, our basic function is the y equals x squared, which looks like this. And we want to move this or shift this up four units. So since we're drawing a sketch, we have to just tell the person grading this, if it were a test, that we know we're going up four units. So we'll put four tick marks. And then we're just going to draw a new vertex here and the parabola shifted up four units. Okay, now example number two is a cubic function that we are going to move down three units. So first we want to draw in the basic function. So draw half of a happy parabola here, half of a sad. That's my cubic function. And now we're going to move that down three units because of the minus sign. So one, two, three. This is where my new vertex or line of center where it is here to here. We're just going to redraw it. So half of a happy, half of a sad. So that is my shifted equation. Now it would be nice if we wrote down what it is that's going on here. So this one is a shift up four and this one is a shift down three. Okay, let's try number three on our own. Pause the video and hit resume when you've done so. Okay, so you first needed to draw in your absolute value function. And we're shifting down, because it's minus, so shift down five units. Okay, 
So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, new vertex, and draw our absolute value function. Okay, so that takes care of vertical shifts. Now let's talk about horizontal shifts. So a horizontal shift means to go left or right. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have the function and the number inside the function. So see how the numbers are inside everything rather than outside? So when I have the plus C, you are probably thinking to go to the right, but this one is always opposite. So write down opposite. So if I have a plus C, that actually means to go to the left C units. So it means to, I'm not going to write left, means to shift left C units. And if I have a minus C, that means to shift to the right C units. Again, opposite of whatever you think it is. Okay, so let's first, in these three examples, figure out what the basic or parent function is. So because I have an x squared here, this is actually a quadratic. What do you think this second one here is? Well, the absolute value bar should be a dead giveaway, so this is an absolute value function. And the last one has a square root in it, so this is a square root function. Okay, and now let's figure out what the shifts are. So if I have a minus 3 in parentheses, that's going to be this shift, so that means we're going to move to the right. So let's write that below. We're going to go right 3. What kind of shift do I have here? If I'm going plus 4, it's really a shift left 4. And if I have a plus 4, that really means same thing, again, to go to the left 4. Okay, so take a minute and see if you can sketch these things. Make sure you're sketching the basic graphs first. And then hit resume when you're finished. Okay, so number one, you should have gotten a quadratic. So that's your basic quadratic. And we're now shifting it to the right, 3. 1, 2, 3 new vertex, new picture. Okay, number two, you should have drawn an absolute value function as my first, and left four, one, two, three, four, draw another absolute value graph, as we should have gotten there. And number four was a little bit trickier because you had to remember what absolute, I'm sorry, what a square root function looks like. That's your basic square root function. And we're moving it to the left for, so your graph vertex here should look like that. Perfect. All right, let's move on to the next type of shift. Okay, so this is a narrower or wider shift. So now, notice how I have my function f of x, whatever it may be, and I have c in front of it. This C in front is attached by multiplication. So if you want to put a little multiplication dot there, you absolutely can. So basically, it's c times f of x. So there's two different scenarios that could happen. If c is greater than 1, then something happens to the graph. If 0 is less than c, less than 1, then something happens to the graph. Now, this is a fancy, fancy, fancy way of saying all numbers between 0 and 1. And all numbers between 0 and 1 are usually fractions. So that's a good way to help you, okay? So when the C value is greater than 1, I'm going to tell you the graph gets narrower. And when the C value is between 0 and 1 or is a fraction like these two, it's actually going to get wider, okay? So the first one, and I would like actually the first thing to do is figure out what our basic function is first. So do that for the first three problems here, and then hit resume when you're finished. Okay, so the first one is a quadratic because you have that x squared. The second one is absolute value because of the absolute value bars. 
And the third one is cubic because it's x to the third, okay? So now let's discuss what type of shift we're going to have here. This one half is a fraction, so that must mean our graph is going to get wider. So first let's draw in our x squared and draw a graph that's simply wider. That would be our shift. So we're going to write wider down here. Okay. Now what happened to the second one? We have y equals 10 times the absolute value of x. So is 10 a number that's greater than 1 or between 0 and 1? So you should say greater than 1, so this graph is actually going to get narrower. Okay, so let's draw in our absolute value graph. And the graph is going to get narrower, so much skinnier, if that helps, like that. And number four, uh, we have our cubic function, so we're going to draw that in. And we are going to become wider because this fraction here is between 0 and 1. So take it piece by piece. Make this first half wider and then make the second half wider and that's your new function. Okay, awesome. Let's move on to the last type of shift where I have a reflection. So the only way I'm going to get a reflection is if I have a negative. The negative is outside the parentheses it's going to flip over the x-axis. So this means a flip over the x-axis. And if I have the negative inside, we're going to flip over the y-axis. Now, doesn't this look familiar? What happened when I plugged in negative x for all values of x? This is even functions, aren't they? And even functions are symmetrical to the y-axis, so that's a flip over the y-axis. So what I'd like you to do first is, with these three examples, first tell me what the basic functions are, and then tell me what kind of flip is going to happen, and then hit resume when you're finished. Okay, so for number one, it's a quadratic. Number two was a square root. And number three is an absolute value. And for the first one, the negative is on the outside, so the negative is on the outside. It's going to be a flip over the x-axis. Number two, the negative is on the inside, so we're going to flip over the y-axis. And the last one, the negative is on the outside, so we're going to flip again over the x-axis. So take a minute, draw your parent graphs or basic graphs, and then graph your new functions, and then hit resume when you've done so. Okay, so the first one, your basic function looks like this, and your flip over the x-axis looks like that. Number two, your square root function looks like this. Your flip over the y-axis looks like that. And number three, your absolute value function looks like this. And your flip over the x-axis looks like that. All right, let's put it all together now and do some transformations that have multiple shifts in one. Let's move on to the next page. Okay, so what I would like to do first is analyze each one of these equations and figure out what kind of shifts have occurred. Well, I see there's a negative on the outside of the parentheses, something inside and something outside. So if you recall, if it's outside the parentheses, this is a shift up. So we're going to go up two units. If you remember, when it's inside the parentheses, it's opposite of the direction you think. So this one is actually going to be to the right 5, and this here is a reflection, because it's a negative on the outside, reflection over the x-axis. Okay, So we're kind of putting them all together. So remember, if it's outside, it goes up or down. 
If it's inside, it goes left or right, and if there's a negative on the outside, it's a reflection over the x-axis. Now, you might be wondering, well, which one of these things do I do first? And you actually follow order of operations. You follow PEMDAS. So we're going to go inside the parentheses, if you would, or the absolute values first. So we're actually going to go to the right five. So first, so let's first draw in our original function just so that we have it. Here is my absolute value function and we're going to move, like I said, to the right five first. So here's my vertex and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. So that's where my new vertex point would be. But now I'm gonna follow order of operations and multiply, because this would come next, and we're gonna reflect it over the x-axis. So we have the vertex here and now it's reflected and then we're gonna move it up two. So one, two, so it's gonna be right here. And this is actually my new function. Now you wanna try not to do it in so many steps. Um, so if you wanna highlight, I mean, this is really your, your final answer. Doing it in steps is good as long as you have an eraser so that you can put your final answer, okay? So let's look at example number two. We have a four on the outside, a two on the inside, and a negative one on the outside. So this negative one means to go down one, and then this positive two in the inside tells us actually to go to the left two, and this four, since it's a number bigger than one, tells us to become more narrow. So, first let's graph our basic function. My basic function is a quadratic because that's squared. And I'm moving the vertex. First, I'm going to move it left two and down one and basically get more narrow. So we're gonna just make it skinnier, if you would. And there's my function. All right, why don't you see if you could do examples three and four on your own uh, hit pause now and then resume when you're finished. Okay, so for number three, this one told us to go to the left three because it's inside the parentheses. The positive one told us to, tells us to go up one and this one half tells us to get wider because it's a number between zero and one or a fraction. Our original function was cubic so we should have that first. And we're going to move left three, up one. And we're gonna get wider as we do that. So wider, like that. It's a big exaggeration. Okay, and on number four, you have a few things going on here. You have this five tells us to go up five. This negative one on the inside tells us to go to the right one. And this negative here on the outside tells us to flip over the x-axis. Okay, so we're going to go in order and we're going to first graph my original function, which happens to be a square root. So we graph that first. We're going to move it right one, which is this way. And we're going to flip it over the x-axis. So it should look like that. And then we're gonna move it up five. One, two, three, four, five. So right here, and like that. So I'll highlight this in red, but this one is my final answer. Now with number four, it was very important the order in which you did it, because if you flipped it after, you would have gotten an entirely different answer. So please make sure you have the correct answer up here. You're going to go in order from inside all the way out. So we'll go in here, then out there, and then the last is the up five. Okay, so please make sure you're jotting down any questions that you might have, and we're going to go over all of this in class tomorrow. All right, have a good night.